the Shadow Education Secretary, Bridget Phillipson, uh, who joins us uh, now. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, we just heard from Nadim Zahawi. Um, I showed him some uh, polling, uh, which shows how far ahead the Labour Party is. But he says it's Keir Starmer who should be worried right now. Do you think that's right? Uh, no, I don't think that's right. I mean, we're not complacent about things, and the only poll that matters is the poll that we see on general election day. But we've made massive progress as a party, and we're the only people setting out a clear vision for how Britain could be better. And Labour's plan would mean we deliver well-paid, highly skilled jobs in every corner of our country, and we get our economy growing once more, something we haven't seen over these last 12 years. Um, as you say, you know, you are doing well in the polls. Um, so I'm quite keen to try and find out a bit more of what you say is a clear vision of what, you know, a Labour government would look like, what the country under Labour would look like. You say you'll deliver more uh, jobs, uh, fairness. I mean, these are things that no one would disagree with. But I'm just going to... I'm keen to get a bit more of a sense about, you know, the sort of values and the principles uh, that a Keir Starmer government would entail. So would you spend more money on public services than the Conservatives? Well, we don't yet know what the situation will be with the public finances. The Conservatives crashed the economy and an incoming Labour government is likely to inherit a very difficult situation and that will mean we have to make difficult choices around public money. But we also have choices, of course, as well about how we raise money. That's why I believe that we should end the tax benefits that private schools enjoy and invest in a brilliant state education for every child, driving up high standards right across our schools. But, you know, we're not in a position right now, of course, given the very uncertain nature of the economy to set out exact figures um, on what that first Labour budget would look like. OK, um, I will talk to you about the education staff um, and give you the space to talk about your policy um, later in the interview. Um, not completely clear from that question whether you'd spend more on public services than the Conservatives. Um, how about immigration? Um, we've got record levels of uh, immigration. Um, Nadim Zahai was saying that it's too high. The Conservatives uh, want to um, bring down particularly illegal uh, migration. What, what's Labour's position? Would you like to see immigration higher or lower? I think my starting point is that immigration has always been an important part of our national story as a country. I wouldn't be stood here speaking to you today were it not for the fact that my grandparents came to this country uh, from Ireland, worked in the NHS and helped to build our country. Uh, but I do recognise at the same time that we need to make sure we're investing uh, in the skills of people here, that we're giving everyone the opportunity to succeed. So there is a balance to strike and that's why we would uh, maintain a points based system where it comes to immigration. OK, um, that's um, clear on the points-based system, certainly. Um, but can we talk about strikes now? Because, again, it's another uh, issue that I think so many people will have uh, you know, big questions uh, about. Um, public sector workers want a pay rise to match inflation. So inflation, obviously, currently around 11%. Um, Nadim Zahawi says that would be unsustainable, it would be unaffordable. What is Labour's position? Would you give inflation matching pay rises to public sector workers? I completely recognise that right across our public services, whether that's nurses or teachers, uh, they've been terribly let down by this government and they want a fair deal. Um, and that is around pay, but it's also about terms and conditions. The fact that so many people working in our public services uh, are burnt out, feel that they have a government that has completely abandoned them. Under the last Labour government, we made sure that we invested in our workforce, that we made sure they were paid properly for the amazing job that they are doing. And I think that is incredibly important. But as I say, pay is one very important element of this but if you speak to head teachers or school support staff as I do right across the country they just feel you know overworked let down and really badly demoralized and that's why it'll be the job of an incoming Labour government to, to demonstrate that we want to work with the people the amazing people in our public services to make sure that you don't have to wait months on end uh, to get access to a hospital appointment the fact that children in all of our schools uh, have opportunities to succeed and that we don't end up in this position as we are now where staff are having to put their hand in their own pocket in order to make sure that children don't go hungry when they arrive at school and Labour's plan around and breakfast clubs, making sure that every child in our country gets a brilliant start to the day is part of how we make life a lot better and easier for staff working in our public services too. Um, I just want to come back because the question was specifically about pay. Um, you say that you would like to see a fair deal, uh, public sector workers should be paid properly, but, but you know, the difficult thing is working out what that means. Would you like to see inflation matching pay rises in the public sector? I want to see a fair deal for all of our workers right across public services. Of course, this is all about negotiation and compromise. But everyone, everyone but it's very would say to do they want to see a fair deal. The question is, what is that fair deal? Negotiate. 
Well, I do think it means recognising the pressure that people are under right now, but also over the last 12 years, uh, pay hasn't been keeping up uh, with demands that workers in our vital services are facing. But you can't get to a position of agreement if you're not prepared to even have that conversation. And what I hear time and again, you know, whether it's real or our schools or the health service, ministers are just not prepared to sit down and talk about these issues properly. We won't get an agreement and we won't get a negotiated settlement that all sides can live with if ministers just say, well, it's nothing to do with me. You know, if I was Secretary of State for Education, I'd be around the table trying to get a solution, working with uh, trade unions to find, find a way through all of this, not stalking tension as ministers all too often seem intent on doing. Um, I don't know what, um, you know, we started the interview talking about the polls and it's pretty clear how well Labour are doing uh, with the polls. If they were replicated in a general election like that uh, result in Chester, then you would have a majority. So I get, you know, that there is obviously a desire in Labour uh, right now to not scare the horses effectively, to kind of play it safe and then you'll hopefully get, as you say, say uh, you know, that majority at the next election. But I guess there's a bit of a frustration sometimes interviewing people from Labour when it does feel like you're being a bit reluctant to nail your colours to the mast. On public sector pay, for example, it's almost like you don't want to put off either side in the debate by saying that you want a fair deal, you want everyone to talk. But I'm not really clear on whether or not you think that inflation matching pay rises are unaffordable uh, or if you're, some, you're saying that it's something that actually uh, the government should do, whatever happens. Because I think trust in politics matters and I'm not going to make promises this morning to you that I don't feel confident I can deliver. I think that's been what's, so, what's been so corrosive to our politics in recent years is Tory politicians in particular saying one thing and doing another. So yes, absolutely, I want to see a better deal for the brilliant people that work right across our education system. And a part of that is around the, the choices that we make around how we find investment and our policy around private schools, around ending those tax breaks and putting that £1.7 billion into more teachers in our classrooms into better mental health support for all of our children and in making sure that all of our staff are properly supported. That's one, I think, really straightforward way the government right now could be doing things differently. And that's a clear divide that you see between Labour and the Conservatives. Our focus on high standards in all of our brilliant state schools, but on driving up standards further and Rishi Sunak, who isn't prepared to stand up to the vested interests in his own party and isn't prepared to do what's right by children and families in our country. Um, you're also calling for a regulatory investigation into private schools. Just to explain what that's about. Now, what we've seen uh, for years now are fees going up often very substantially. Um, and, you know, I think there needs to be a full investigation into whether that market is operating effectively. We've heard lots of outlandish claims from Jeremy Hunt and from Rishi Sunak and others about the impact of Labour's policy, which I just don't think are borne out by the evidence. But if you look at the fees that private schools are charging right now, they have gone up way beyond earnings in cash terms. And I think it is important uh, that the CMA investigate this matter and see whether this market is working properly. And I think it does now fall to the Secretary of State for Education, to whom I've written, to make sure that matter is referred to the CMA and that they look into it. But who, whose side is she on? Is she on the side of parents, on the side of children, on delivering a brilliant education for all of our children? Or is she not prepared either to stand up to the vested interests in her own party? OK, thank you very much for being on the programme uh, this morning. Bridget Phillips in there for the Labour Party.